It's crazy because if we saw each other on the street, like neither one of us would know that either of us was a cancer survivor. So I started to sing in Korea really early on at the age of seven. So by the time I was 15, I was a pretty accomplished mariachi singer and I had even been like on a few TV shows. But that all changed when I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. For a while, my grandma would always notice like a lump in my neck when I would be eating. But we thought she was just being paranoid because she had just finished fighting cancer herself. I still went to the doctor and at the time I had a cold, so the doctor thought that it was just swollen lymph nodes or something. But months passed by and the lump was still there, so we went back. And after realizing that it definitely was not just swollen lymph nodes, I was immediately sent for biopsies. And the results that were supposed to take three days got back to us in one. I mean, I remember being in my room getting ready and my mom getting a phone call. She comes into my room with this like look on her face that I just knew something was wrong. And I asked her, I was like, I, I have cancer, right? And she was a little bit taken aback by my acceptance of it, but I, you know, and I wasn't upset, I wasn't mad. I kind of just felt like it was something in my life that I knew I was going to have to, you know, get over. So within the next two weeks, I had surgery and had a tumor the size of a golf ball and my thyroid removed. And I remember waking up from surgery and my parents being there and asking me if I was feeling okay. But the first thing I noticed was that I couldn't speak louder than a whisper. I tried to talk and the doctors thought that I was just in pain and they said I would get better the next day, but it didn't get better. And um, it turns out that I got a paralyzed vocal cord after my surgery. So that's pretty much when it really hit me the most because I, I couldn't yell, I couldn't scream, but most of all, I couldn't sing. Soon after my surgery, I got radiation and I had a full body scan. And unfortunately it was not clear, so my mom did research and begged to be referred to this uh, specific doctor that we call our angel doctor now. And he was really skeptical about taking me in because someone else had already gone in and worked on me. And I had a second surgery a few weeks later, and this time he put a device down my throat during the surgery that sent these like electrical impulses to my vocal cords that would prevent them from pa becoming paralyzed, which is something that probably should have been done the first time. The next surgery went really great. I woke up and my vocal cord was not paralyzed, so that was a really good thing. Um, so then I had another dose of radiation and another scan, and it still did not come out clear. So yeah, ever since then, I, besides having to take thyroid medication every single day for the rest of my life, even though my doctors have said that it's safe to say I'm cancer free because there hasn't been any growth, it's like every time that I go, it is, you know, one of the things on my mind is just like, what's gonna turn out this time? I definitely have like just learned to love life and just live every single day to the absolute fullest. Yeah, I think it's just something that I wouldn't really ever change about my life, even though I have asked myself, like, why would I get the cancer that affected me in the way that I loved the most? But I think overall it's made me a, a better person and just an optimistic, strong girl. The summer of 2015, I was going into my senior year of high school. Um, I was playing varsity volleyball and I was an AP student. I had had some pain in my knee during practices sometimes, but I continued to play through it. I went to my doctor for a physical um, and she denied me clearance to play, obviously. So I went and got an MRI and after about a week of testing, I was diagnosed with stage two osteosarcoma with a tumor about the size of a golf ball in my left proximal tibia, which is my left knee. For me, one of the most difficult parts of getting cancer was not actually the cancer itself, um, but rather the life that I was thrown into afterwards. I struggled severely with anxiety and depression after I finished treatment. And I've always struggled with depression, but I was supposed to be the happiest I could possibly be. I was cancer free, like how could you not ask for a better possible outcome? But I was in a really dark place. I felt like I lost my sense of identity. 
Um, before cancer, I was this intense athlete and AP student. Um, after cancer, I was barely good at walking and I, my brain was mush um, from the chemo. I hadn't socialized in over a year and I was so self-conscious about the way that my hair looked or the lack thereof and my scar and the weight that I had gained during treatment and I had no idea who I was going to be now. Um, even though it gave me all of these physical problems, all of these mental problems, I found a way to cope, to overcome it all. And I think one of the biggest gifts that my cancer gave to me was the gift of a positive outlook on life. I think I choose to live every day as if it's my last and live every day to the most. Um, and I think <sighs> life is definitely not perfect, but it's wonderful because I have this, this little voice in the back of my head that's always there that just reminds me of what happened and what can happen. And I use that not to fuel my life with like fear of relapsing, of getting cancer again. And even though I was dealt a really difficult card, I'm grateful for it because it made me the person that I am today. Well, I think that one of the first thoughts was that our story is really similar, um, even though it's really different and it like really oh, <laughs> I know every time yeah it always happens. <laughs> I just like would just I just didn't know I could connect with someone that was like going through cancer even though it's a different type of cancer because I think in my head it's always like you know everyone's experience is totally different but it's crazy to see someone like my age go through the same thing and feel the same things yeah it's crazy because if we saw each other on the street, like neither one of us would know yeah. that either of us was a cancer survivor. Yeah. No, I think another thing that really like resonated with me was just the fact that you went through something like, you know, like losing something that you love to do. And I think that a lot of people, like when I tell that to like people that haven't gone through something like this, like they don't really understand. Yeah. So I finished treatment in June and then I went to college in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, so I was still bald and I was wearing wigs and I ended up getting hair extensions. But people would ask me like about my wigs and I was so self-conscious if I, you know, if my scar came up or something like that. Like I yeah. didn't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Not because I was like ashamed, but I knew that people weren't going to get it. Yeah. And cancer makes people really uncomfortable. Yeah, it does. And I, one of my like life mission goals is to help like ease that sort of conversation is to just sort of casually bring up like, oh yeah, I had cancer. Yeah. And I think even though it's obviously a really tough subject to talk about, no. I think it's really important to be able to have these kinds of conversations. Yeah. One of the biggest things that I heard from people around me when I was going through treatment was like, they didn't want to hurt my feelings by saying the wrong thing. And so they just didn't say anything at all. It's way better to say something little like, I don't know what to say to you right now. I'm so sorry, like I love you. Mm -hmm. That's such a good, simple sentence and that's all you need. And I think the more people that know that, the better because everyone knows someone who has had cancer. At some point in your life, you're gonna have to say, you know, send your well wishes or whatever to someone who's going through treatment. Yeah. And if you have the right thing to say or even just like knowing that it's better to say something than nothing. And I think I'm also really comfortable um, like telling my story just because I think that there's just this preconception of like what cancer is and like I think that people think that everyone goes through it like the same thing and because I remember a lot of times people would ask me like oh did you lose your hair and like not everyone goes through the yeah. same path you yeah. know of treatment and um, or they would think that because I didn't lose my hair that it wasn't as like extreme yeah. as other ones which yeah. it is true to an extent you know but it's like it's ex it's extreme in its own ways so I think that people just need to understand that Every, you know, everyone's story is different, and even though it is different, like, you know, it, they're, they're both, they're all bad, you know? And yeah. I think that I have to live the best life I can. I have to be the best person I can for all the people that didn't get the chance to be their best selves, to live their lives. Well, I want to say thank you for sharing your story. I feel like, I mean, I didn't know what this was going to be going into it, but I'm so glad that I got to meet another AYA. 
cancer survivor. <laughs> I want to hug you. Hug, yeah. <laughs> My mom was definitely always the one who would be really, really bummed out afterwards. And I would kind of just look at her and be like, Mom, it's like, it's okay. Like, we'll just, maybe next time. But she really, like, always says that she, like, learned from me and, like, how I was always very positive. And she's like, I could never comprehend that. My mom says that all the time. <laughs>